Now it's time for today's perspective, and we're going to uh, bring you the story of an American reporter who relocates to Japan, manages to pass an exam in Japanese, and become the first foreign born journalist to work on the staff of a major Japanese newspaper. He spends 12 years on the job working as a crime reporter, dealing with a series of issues, including the Japanese mafia. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it, for a book or a TV series? And it has become both. It is also, though, the true story of the author Jake Adelstein, whose book Tokyo Voice, an American reporter on the police beat in Japan, last year became an international smash hit television series. And he's here with us today as his new book, here it is, Tokyo Detective, is just being released here in French. Jake Adelstein, welcome back onto the programme. It, it is a pleasure to be back. Pleasure to have you, because we had uh, you on four years ago talking about your... Bitcoin books, but we're going to talk about Tokyo Vice today. I want to talk about the first uh, okay. book and series first, if that's all right with you. Um, I mean, the success of what has happened with a book that you wrote nearly 15 years ago now, I mean, that's quite incredible, isn't it? It, it is. It's like a zombie that keeps coming back in a very good way. Um, but, you know, 15 years ago, the Yakuza were very powerful. Uh, they're certainly not powerful now. I mean, every year the numbers decline. The average age of a Yakuza is 51. Yesterday I turned 54. Uh -huh. That would make me an old Yakuza. <laughs> I mean, you know, most of their activities now are, are funerals, mm -hmm. which reminds me, you, you know, we, we have a sort of Yakuza thing going on. You've got the Yakuza funeral suit. If your tie was a little purple. blacker, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then I've got the Yakuza on vacation look. You know. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. And how has that happened? Because, uh, you know, knowing as you do the way the police work and the way the Japanese mafia works, how has those numbers gone down by so many? Well, you know, there was kind of an, an unwritten line that the Yakuza didn't cross because uh, when we say Yakuza, the Japanese mafia, we're probably talking about 23 groups, um, each with its own headquarters, each with its own codes, corporate symbols. Um, they were very powerful in Japan for hundreds of years. Um, the Yamaguchi Gumi as a corporation has existed since 1915. You know, that's over 100 years in business, and, and that business includes construction, extortion, blackmail, uh, illegal gambling, of course, um, betting on sports, all those things. Uh, starting around 2005, 2006, and, it, and it's in Tokyo Detective, they started getting into the stock market and the financial markets. And that concerns the Japanese government because when the Yakuza are manipulating your stock markets, mm -hmm. when you wake up one day and the equivalent of Facebook, you know, Japan is now owned by the Yamaguchi Mikodokai um, with all your personal information, that disturbs people. Uh, and so gradually the police became aware that we're going to have to actually do something about them. Um, you know, I'm, so, you know, you would think this is obvious, but the prosecutors, the customs officials, the local police all got together and they started planning, okay, how do we get rid of the Yakuza from the financial markets? And a lot of this was all sort of came up and was covered among some of the issues and some of the stories that you tell in, in the book. Yeah, yeah. And... You know, um, I, I think one of the pivotal point was that there was a company called Surga Corporation listed on Tokyo Stock Exchange. On their board of directors was a former member of the National Police Agency, a former organized crime crop from the um, Saitama Police Department, a former prosecutor. Uh, and that company made $400 million in 2007. But they did that by giving $150 million to a Yakuza front company run by the Godogumi to terrorize people to leave their apartments. And the police were able to arrest one or two Yakuza for violating the lawyer's laws, because only a lawyer can evict people in Japan from their homes. Um, but no one in that corporation went to jail. And then they realized, oh, you know, if we don't criminalize the people that pay the Yakuza, that make profits with them, we'll never get them out of business. And so that process began very and slowly. The, you can see, listening to that story, why um, you know, it would be seized upon and, and wanted to be turned into a television series that's been so successful. Yeah, I, I, you know, the, the, uh, the early days like were the Wild West. I and mean, when you're dealing with these mafiosa that have so much power, that are so connected, that they can, uh, they can make a newspapers not report a crime that a politician is involved in. Um, I can say it now, that Itoyama Eitaro was a Japanese politician, very powerful in the Liberal Democratic Party. Um, he was caught having sex with a young, a young woman. Now, according to the laws of the time, he claimed that he didn't know she was underage, so it wasn't a crime. And he hired the, uh, allegedly hired the Godogumi, uh, a Yakuza group, to make the press shut up about it. So when 
he was, you know, so when the person that was blackmailing him, which was another yuck, because it was actually arrested, we couldn't put his name in the paper, or we decided not to put his name in the paper. And that's how powerful the mob could be. They could get the media to drop stories, or cover stories that, paid pe that put people in an unpopular light. So the new book then, Tokyo Detective, um, just out in French, is, is it more of the same? Where does it, where does it go? Where does it take you? Uh, I think it takes you from um, a period of, you know, after Tokyo Vice when I became kind of an arrogant dick um, <laughs> to... You said it. I did, it is true. <laughs> uh, I think my father used those words. Um, yeah. From, you know, this period of time uh, battling the Yakuza to... Um, the nuclear disaster and discovering that, you know, there are worse things than the Japanese mob, and that is Tokyo Electric Power Company and this entire corrupt structure of politicians and uh, the nuclear industry that had been covering up uh, accidents that happened and knew that there would be an accident eventually um, at Fukushima and then didn't do anything about it. Um, so it's kind of a, a story of political awakening, of personal awakening, um, and realizing that my worst enemy might not be a Yakuza boss, but it might be myself and my habit of smoking a uh, couple packs of closed cigarettes a day. <laughs> there have been some criticism of the book, haven't there? Some people have said that, you know, you're making a lot of it up or you're exaggerating a lot of it. How do you respond to that? Well, my response to that was a lot of that is just lazy journalism. Some of it is jealousy, but um, I decided to be constructive about it. So if you go to unseenjapan.com, um, I put up about five gigabytes of data, um, redacted, so I'm not blowing my sources, but in Japanese and English, um, with the original documents, with uh, passport data of some criminals, so that anyone who wants to verify it for themselves is welcome to do it. So I open sourced it. That's my <laughs> reaction. Really? Okay, why don't you take, six, you know, that's 16 years of my life. Why don't you take 60 days and go through these materials and you can verify it yourself? Okay, it may take a little while. Um, what next? I mean, uh, reading yesterday afternoon, Tokyo Vice has been recommissioned. Uh, with the second season will start uh, about the time that the leaves of autumn fall. I, I can't say the actual date, but it, it's coming along very nicely. Um, this year, I have no plans to write a new book. Uh, I, I am a Zen Buddhist priest, and my, my Zen master told me that I'll have to do koan practice, which is they give you this one of these riddles to solve, like what is the sound of one hand clapping or show me your original face before you were born, which I actually didn't think was part of our particular practice. So uh, this year I'm focusing on my, my Zen Buddhism, my meditation, learning some more rituals and trying to become more enlightened. And, and, and I guess I'll have to solve one of those riddles. I'm hoping that the answer is written somewhere down there, you know, like in a secret book. Sounds like with you, Jake, there's always going to be something else, doesn't there? <laughs> well, there you go. That is the book. It's uh, Tokyo Detective, following on uh, from Tokyo Voice, and it's uh, available um, uh, in French at the moment, but it's being translated into English as well. Yes, it should be available in English next year. Okay, Jake, thank you very much. Jake, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us here on France 24. Thanks.